This case started about 10 years ago during the presidential campaign of 2004. President George W. Bush was on the campaign trail. He was planning to spend the evening in Jacksonville, Oregon. And his visit uh, attracted the attention of a large uh, number of supporters and opponents. Uh, there were about two or 300 anti-Bush demonstrators who were lined up on one side of California Street, and there were about the same number of pro-Bush demonstrators who were lined up on the other side. And they were all there waiting for the presidential motorcade to go by. Um, at that point, though, the president's plans changed. And the president decided that he would actually have dinner at a place called the Jacksonville Inn. Uh, when the uh, anti-Bush demonstrators learned about this, then, then they quickly moved over in front of the inn, um, took up positions there, and, and were chanting slogans and, and waving signs. Um, but the Secret Service uh, quickly decided that for security reasons, they wanted to move the anti-Bush protesters away from the front of the inn, uh, about two blocks away. And after the dust settled, the protesters brought this lawsuit, seeking damages against the Secret Service agents on the grounds that they had violated their First Amendment rights. In particular, the protesters argued that they had been the victims of viewpoint discrimination. Uh, in a number of cases, the Supreme Court has said that one of the most basic principles of the First Amendment is that the government is not allowed to discriminate against particular speakers because of the views that they're expressing. And the protesters in this case said that that was exactly what had happened to them, that the Secret Service agents had moved them uh, a further distance away from the president while allowing the president's supporters to remain where they were, and that that was an unconstitutional discrimination based on their views. But this morning, the Supreme Court rejected that position and dismissed the lawsuit. The decision was unanimous, and it was written by Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And Justice Ginsburg began by reaffirming the rule against viewpoint discrimination. She said the government can't restrict uh, somebody's expression in a public place simply because the government dislikes or disagrees with the expression. At the same time, however, uh, Justice Ginsburg pointed out that uh, the government has always been allowed to regulate the time, place, and manner of expression if it has a valid reason for doing so. And in this case, um, she said that that was true. Um, she said that we rely on Secret Service agents to protect the safety of the president. Uh, in this case, she said there was a valid security rationale for moving the anti-Bush demonstrators because the place that they were standing was actually within weapons or explosive range of the president. And she said that was not true of the president's supporters because the place where they were standing, uh, there was actually a building in between them and the patio where the president was eating. Um, so she said there was good reason to move the opponents, but no good reason to move the supporters. For these reasons, she concluded that the Secret Service agents did not engage in unreasonable or unconstitutional viewpoint discrimination. Now, from what I've said, you might think that the actual holding of this case is that the Secret Service did not violate the First Amendment rights of the protesters here. And in effect, that is what the court said. Um, but strictly speaking, the court ruled that the Secret Service agents here were entitled to qualified immunity in the case. And that's a little bit more technical, so let me uh, explain what that means. Um, as I, I mentioned, this is a lawsuit for damages. Uh, in other words, the protesters are asking the Secret Service agents um, be required to pay money um, to compensate the protesters for the violation of their rights. And there's no doubt that the government, um, government officials sometimes can be ordered to pay money damages to individuals when they violate their rights. But the Supreme Court has been uh, long concerned that allowing uh, the recovery of damages in a situation like that may discourage officials from um, making the courageous decisions that we need them to make to promote the public good. Um, so in, in those cases, the Supreme Court has said that to recover damages against a government official, um, you actually have to show two things. Um, you have to show that they violated your constitutional rights, but you also have to um, show that those rights were clearly established at the time that the officials acted so that they uh, reasonably should have known that they were violating your rights. Um, that was the technical basis of the court's decision today. Justice Ginsburg um, stressed that um, Secret Service agents have to use their judgment in order to protect the president um, under difficult or changing circumstances, and that that's especially true when the specter of presidential assassination is raised. Um, at the time of these events, the Supreme Court had never held 
that Secret Service agents have to allow um, two different groups of protesters to stand at an exactly equal distance from the president. And as the facts of this case indicate, a rule like that really wouldn't make any sense because of um, the security concerns that might be at issue. Um, so for this reason, the, the court concluded that the agents um, had no reason to believe that they were violating the Constitution, so they couldn't be held liable for damages. In conclusion, I would say that this decision is a very narrow one. Uh, it really says that simply on the facts of this case, the Secret Service did not violate the First Amendment rights of the protesters. And the case certainly doesn't mean that the Secret Service has carte blanche to keep protesters away from the president or to prevent them from expressing their views. At the same time, I think it's fair to say that the justices believe that um, these kinds of judgments need to be made by the Secret Service itself and that the justices are not interested in second guessing the decisions made by the Secret Service as long as there's a reasonable security rationale for making them.